I want to show you one of the dangers. Sometimes people say, it doesn't matter. This is just, this is just, just, it's just a small thing. It does not matter. This is, just, this is a little sin. It doesn't mean anything. This is just little. Even if it means it's um, diluting righteousness, it was just a small sin. I want to show you the, the consequence, what small sin can cause for you as a person, as a child of God. Go with me the book of uh, jo Joshua, if you are there. Joshua chapter 11. Are you there? Joshua chapter 11. Are you there? Please read for me from verse... Uh, from verse 12 Joshua 11 from verse 12 read 12 to 13 and then you now jump to 22 please please stay attentively please yes hmm. Hmm. Okay. Now, hold on. Man. Let me explain to you what happened here. God gave instruction to Joshua through Moses. All the Philistine cities destroy all the cities. Don't leave anyone. He destroyed all the cities, but he left some cities that was built on the mud. You know what is a mud? You know, you know it's all these heaps. Heaps, all this kind of heap. You know, in those days when, when they when they gather spoils, they build heap on them. Some cities were built on those heap. They were small cities. They, 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 because those cities were so small, Joshua said, No, I don't this one doesn't matter. Let me just leave them. They are so small. I don't need to destroy them. So he destroyed the big cities, the Philistine cities, the Anakims, but he left the cities that was on the mall. Please go ahead now. Mm. Okay, go to go from 21. Yes. 21, my yes, to 22. Mm. He destroyed the Anakims, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. 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 Yeah. No Anakims, the Philistia, none of them was left. Uh -huh. mm. Mm. Nam, it's okay, hold on, ma. Some survived where? Gaza. Where the next place again? In Gath. Where again? Ashidod. That's okay, my can sit down. Let me explain to you what happened there. So God gave a command to the to the Israelites, Joshua, to destroy all the Philistine pagan cities. All the big big cities, they destroy all the big big cities. But they left these three small cities. Even though the city were Philistine city. Wow. <laughs> okay, let's see how God will help us. Even though this city were Philistia city, he left them. He left Gaza. He left Ashidod. And they left that. Because they were built on the moor. They were small cities. They left them. But what happened to these three cities you see so? Number one, starting from Gaza. Gaza brought out a prostitute, Delilah, that destroyed, later time, was brought up a prostitute that destroyed something. Something, when we went down to Gaza, it was a prostitute in Gaza that destroyed something. What about God? Goliath was a champion, the, I would say he was a champion of God. Goliath that threatened Israel for 40 days. Came out from that. What about Ashidon? When they took the ark of God, they took it to Ashidon. That means those little little sin, you say it doesn't matter, can threaten your life in future. 
It may be anger. Maybe called emperor that is for you, it looks so little, it doesn't matter. They can rise up against you later to fight you. The small city that they felt was inconsequential brought out champions, came out from that place. The small city may be your phone. You spend so much time on phone. You spend so much time watching things that you think it doesn't no matter. Is it not just Z word? Is it not just maybe I'm watching beauty? Is it not just even porn? And they rise up against you later. It might be anger. They will rise up to scatter marriage. At the time Joshua was facing the city, they were so consequential because they were so small. They were built on mobs. But the Bible says many years came. Those cities brought down a, a mighty giant of God, Samson. There is no body creature that is as strong as Samson. But those small cities that Joshua left brought out, brought out instruments that brought down a mighty man of God. So the question for you, me and you tonight, today is, what is that little thing in your life? Only you know about it. Only you know about that little thing. What is the Gaza in your life? What is the gut in your life that only you know about? What is the Ashidon that the whole ark of God was taken to Ashidon? They carried God to Ashidon. When they got to Ashidon, the Bible said they brought them before their temple, Dagon. And the, the, the God was falling out before. The God has been taken to Ashidon. You might be worried. Just worry. You are always worried about things. You are always worried. That little thing you see doesn't matter like worry. It can ruin you. It can ruin your destiny. As small as worry is. That's what the Bible says, be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by supplication, by prayer, make your request known to God. For you, those little things might be what have diluted the righteousness that is in you. For you, they don't matter. But Satan can hold hand, can stand on that Gaza to, to remove your hair. He can stand in that Gaza, that thing that make you a Nazarene, that thing that make you a child of God, to cut off your hair. I don't have time, I would have told you about the old man. Maybe anytime time I have opportunity to talk about that again. Today during the Mass, I think that was the reading in the Mass. The old, old self and the new self. I pray we have another time to, to talk about that. So that is it. So now, bef before we round off. Just to make one or two points before we round off. Number one. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 64, verse 6, He said, Our righteousness is but a filthy rag in the sight of God. So your righteousness is not enough. He said, Our righteousness is but a filthy rag in the sight of God. And that is why He told us, I think that's 2 Corinthians, Corinthians right? Yes, chapter 5, verse 21, where he says, We are the righteousness of, of God in Christ's name. 
favorite time you've told God, this little Gaza in my life, this guts in my life, this attitude in my life, I'm tired of them. How do I come out of it? And you go back to this life again. Because yourself can help yourself out of that. Until you submit to the righteousness of God. Until you submit to the Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit, come and help me. I don't want my righteousness to be diluted. Because the way the world is structured, there will be a lot of things that will influence you to do what you don't want to do. I told you about people who were telling us, why not just check for them? It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. It's not just to change your, change your age. What is the problem about that? If you need this job and you don't want to lie down so that you can sleep with him or sleep with her and you're here complaining, A lady was telling me how a man that that's why you don't need to you must be very careful the kind of thing you expose yourself to. How the man carried her thing from Finima or from Borneo, so just drop her from there they became friends and everything. One of those occasions, he carried her from, from the house, brought her to this roundabout. In the night, he to have sex with her. She told him she cannot do that. He told her to, he told her to get out of her, out of his uh, car and everything. And she was stranded. There was no money. They will go back to where she came from. Because of that, she doesn't have an option. She had to, she had to go back to the car to have sex with him. So that the guy could take her back that night back to her house. So that is to say, you have a duty to the blood of Jesus Christ. One of the things the blood of Jesus Christ did, one of the things that Jesus Christ did was to deal with sin. The blood of Jesus deals with sin. But discipline deals with the sin. They bring you alcohol and only, only you, like most of the time when I, when I fly, <laughs> fly, they will bring you alcohol, bring you wine, bring everything. You have to be disciplined saying, I don't need this. Nobody's watching me, but God is watching me. I'm representing God in this flight. Everybody is doing it. Well, you, you stand up and say, no, I cannot do this. I am different. And because I am representing God in this place. Praise the Lord. So as we, as we round off, Romans chapter 6 verse 33 says, do not present your body as a slave for righteousness. But rather present your body as a slave for righteousness. Who is a slave? A slave has no will of his own. He's, he's just there. Whatever they tell her to do or him to do, that's what he does. That means you must come to a level by you are a slave of righteousness. I cannot do it on my own again. It's only what he tells me to do. That's what I'm doing. I'm going to be, yes, you can call me fool, but I'll be fool for God. For those who will become fool for God, God makes them fool. Praise the Lord. So never allow anything, the righteousness of God that God has given you, never allow anything to dilute it. To tell you, look at you, you are here doing sister, you are here doing brother. People are, people, are, people are moving and you are here saying you are doing brother and sister. They are there now. Don't worry about them. Let them keep on going. 
The Bible says, Isaiah chapter 40, and then from verse 31, it says, For they that wait on the Lord, the mountain will win as they go. He said, They run, they are not weary. They walk, they don't, they don't faint. Why? Because God gives them wings. That means when you wait on God, you build them wings to fly. They may be running, no problem. So I want to encourage you. I don't know what you are going through because of because you have choose to live a right a, a, a rightful life. Because you choose to be in right standing with God. I want to encourage you. I don't know what you are going through this moment because you choose to serve God sincerely. Even when no one is watching you, you choose to do what is right. I want to tell you, God does not fail his own. He said, though they will be casting down, but for you, the Bible said there will be a lifting up. He said, I've been, I've been old. He said, I was young, but now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Not the children of the righteous begging prayer. Because of what? God is too faithful to fail. As I ran off from now, I want to tell you one or two benefits of being righteous. Number one, Proverbs 14, verse 34. Proverbs 14, verse 34. It says, Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. As long as you choose to walk in righteousness, the hand of God will be there to exalt your life. In Isaiah 54 verse 14, Isaiah 54 verse 14, he said, In righteousness shall thou be established. He said, Number one, oppression shall be far from you. He said, For terror, it will come near you. That means you can, righteousness establishes your life. When you walk in righteousness, God gives you a foundation. Righteousness becomes a pillar for you. You are grounded. That is, that is it. In the book of Matthew chapter 6, 33, it says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his what? Righteousness. He said, and all these things shall be added unto you. What people are pursuing after those things God made them to be added to your life. If you go to Proverbs chapter 21, verse 21, one of the things that righteousness does for you, you see, it makes you those that follow after righteousness. Number one, they find life. Number two, they find prosperity prosperity. Number three, it brings honor to their life. It's Psalm 112, verse 6, and Psalm 55, verse 22. He said, those who walk in righteousness, they shall never be shaken. They will, be, they will have a solid foundation. They will never be shaken. So righteousness gives you a standing in God. Like I told us earlier, he said, many are the afflictions of the righteous. That's Psalm uh, uh, 34, I think, verse 19 or so. But the Lord delivered him from them all. Maybe you are at the point of giving up. You are at the point of saying that it's enough. I want you not to give up. If you can hold on to God and say, I won't dilute my, my Christian life. I will not start dressing the way the world is dressing. I will not start speaking the word they, they say the, the, word, the, the way the word is speaking. I am going to stand in for God. If you can hold on to God 
I'm telling you, God will not let you down. Maybe you are passing through trouble now. Maybe you are passing through worries now because you decided to live for God. Because you said, my life will praise, please God. Because you said, my life will glorify God. And you are passing through trouble. You are passing through trauma. You are passing through situation. I want to encourage you, my sister. I want to encourage you, my brother. God does not let down his people. God does not let down. The Bible said that instead of God, instead of God to forsake his word or to leave you that heaven where he lives will pass away the earth that is his footstool will pass away God is saying you are the apple of the eyes of God that means you are located in the eyes of God you are so precious in the sight of God God does not forsake his own he said no longer shall for light the sun give you light no longer shall the moon give you light he said I the Lord your God I will become your everlasting light that's what the Bible said in John chapter 8 verse 12 he said I'm the light of the world if you walk with me you will not walk in darkness but you will have the light of life in John chapter 6 verse 35 the Bible said I'm the bread of life I'm the bread of life if you can depend upon him he's going to give you bread he's going to give you bread at his own appointed time it may not be your time but it will become the time of God I don't know the season that you are now if you can hold on to God and say God, uh, the world can forsake me. Everything can come back on me, but I will not give up on you. I'm going to follow you. I'm going to do your will. I'm telling you, God will rise up for you. He will stand up for you. He will make all things beautiful in his own time. You can stand up in the name of Jesus. I have confidence in you. Jesus, I have confidence in you. Any time, any day, I have confidence in you. Jesus, I have confidence in you, Jesus. Jesus, I have confidence in you, Savior, I have confidence in you, any time, any day, say, I have confidence in you. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. Now begin to say, God, help me, help me, Lord, to live a righteous life. Help me, Lord, to dilute the righteousness in me. Help me, God, help me, Lord, not to compromise. Help me, King of glory. Help me, O oh Lord. Help me, Father. Begin to pray this moment. Begin to pray this moment. I've, I've struggled a lot. I've struggled a lot. Help me, oh God, so that this Gaza will not kill me. So that this gut will not kill me. So that this accident in my life will not kill me. God, help me, oh God. Help me, Father, that this thing that looks so little, this Gaza in my life, this thing that looks so little, that defy the righteousness in me, that diluted the grace of God in me. Father, help me today. I come before you. I come before you because, oh God, I'm the righteousness of Christ. Righteousness of Christ and the righteousness of Christ. Begin to ask God now. Say, God, help me. The psalmist said, in Psalm 1 to 1, I look up to the hills from where comments my help, that my help will come from the Lord who made heaven and earth. It will come from the Lord that made heaven and earth. Begin to ask the Lord, God, come and help me. I depend upon your name. The Bible said, in Psalm 27, from verse 1, he said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. He said, Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? That when the wicked one, even my foe, when they come to eat up my flesh, the Bible said they stumble and they fall. Begin to pray now and tell 
Ele bobo sate le kote lika irate kopa lante te ere kopa rante tia la baba zode ali poko serebo as God will help you. Father help me. Ale babo shate le kate kata eriko pasanta. I ask for the help of God to do the will of God to stand in in righteousness to stand in righteousness. Help me, Father. Ala baba sote le not to delude the righteousness in me to do only what you want to do only what you want. Father, I ask you, help me, O Lord. Karaba shakada. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus, begin to ask the Lord this moment. Say, God, show me mercy. Show me mercy all the way. Oh God, I've been struggling with Gaza in my life. I've been struggling with Ashdod in my life. I've been struggling with God in my life. Father, King of Glory, show me mercy, O oh God. All the moment I've been living in a righteous life that no man know about, only you know about God. Father, help me, help me out of this trouble. Help me out of this trouble. Mareke bosata lekata eriga boshede. Lord help me oh God I ask for the help of God I ask for the help of God show me your mercy Father show me your mercy the Bible say unto the merciful you show yourself merciful show yourself merciful unto me Father I call upon your name. I call upon your name. Glorify yourself, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Beli gwenoa, lokuroa, chimo a hobeimo. Onye di kage, onye di kage, neli gwendo wa, no poro wa, chimo, ahobe mo, onye di kage, onye di kage yo, neli gwendo wa, no poro wa, chimo, ahobe mo, Onye de kagi, onye de kagi yo, deli gwenu wa chimo, opuro wa eze mo, ahube mo, onye de kagi. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for you at this moment. May you be empowered in the name of Jesus Christ. Be empowered to live a holy life. Amen. Even in your secret place. Be empowered to live a righteous life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. As I pray for you, I pray for myself. As I pray for you, I pray for the world. That God will help you to you not know, to live a compromising Christian life. In the name of Jesus. You will stand as light. In the, in the city you will stand as light. The Bible says even in darkness there arise a light. Your light will shine in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not bury your life under the bushel in the name of Jesus Christ. By this word we speak unto you. Those of you who are under any, any sickness as I issue for this word of God, may you receive your healing now in the name of Jesus. Are you suffering from bleeding? I pray that such the bleeding will stop in the name of Jesus Christ. Are you under the spell of the devil? I command you to be free by the power in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive your healing. Receive your healing in the name of Jesus. You are welcome to the food of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You can clap now for Jesus as you sit down.